Hi guys, let's have some fun. Say your teacher is really evil today and gives you a real complicated equation to solve. Well, don't worry about anything. We have our step-by-step -step equation solver right here. And as difficult as the equation might be, we can solve it all step by step. Let's do a simple example. 3x plus 10 equal, I mean 3x plus 1 equal to 10. So what do we have to do first? Well, first we subtract 1, that gives us 3x equal 9, then we are supposed to divide by 3, right? So we're going to get x equals 3, and we can plug that back in to see that we are right. If we only change a number, immediately the steps change. Minus turns into adding as opposed to subtracting. Um, let's go back to plus and let's say our teacher gets mean and he says, well, what about we have a natural logarithm equation, 3x plus 10, 3x uh, plus 17 equal to 10. Well, what are we supposed to do first? Apply e, correct, on both sides, exponentiate both sides, so e and ln cancel each other out, so we end up with 3x plus 17 on the left side and e raised to the 10 on the right side. Well, next we subtract 17, and then we are supposed to divide by 3, and we get this fancy equation. Well, if your teacher says, what is that number as a decimal? Don't worry, it's right here. 7336.da-da-da-da-da-da-da, a big number. And if it's not ln, but let's say it was a sine function, which is not more than 10, but let's say it's equal to 1 half, well, then we know how to do that as well, right? We apply the inverse sine, arc sine on both sides. So the inverse sine and sine cancel each other out to get 3x plus 17 equal to pi over 6, which is arc sine of 1 half. Then we are subtracting 17 and we're dividing by 3 to get our exact answer, pi minus 102 divided by 18 and we can do anything else we can do sine we can do logarithm we can do e we can do as you like how about we gonna have oops that's a typo raised to the 2 okay so what we do first is we are gonna expand this equation to turn this into a quadratic equation and when we have a quadratic equation, we need the coefficients a, b, and c, which we extract from our equation up there, plug it into the quadratic equation, and do it all out, and do it all out, and do it all out, until we arrive at our two solutions, here in exact format, down here in decimal format. Perfect. How good is this? And if you want to solve inequality, that works the same way. You can do the quadratic equation, which we just did, or complete the square. What about if we want to solve a 2 by 2 system? No problem. We can enter our two equations. Um, and then we're going to use the elimination method. So I scroll up. First equation gets multiplied by 3, the second by 2 to get our modified two equations, which we then subtract, ending with 13y equals 13, so we can see that y has to be 1, and then x has to be 1 as well. How good is this? So uh, for algebra, we can do our usual algebra uh, steps here as well. Say we want to find a partial fraction, 1 over x squared minus 1, we do it all out, we set up the um, a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1. These two uh, denominators multiplied, of course, will give you this denominator. And then we do our steps until we find the coefficients a and b, plug them in, and here we have our partial decomposition. And we can also deal with functions, find domain and range, intersection, composition, average rate of change, 
inverse function, slope, midpoint, distance, all of this step by step, exponents in logarithms, rule of 72, solve any exponential growth problem, um, do solve logarithms, evaluate logarithms, change of base, and last but not least, we also include for you a change, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the conversion for different number bases. All of this and much more available in the step-by-step -step equation solver avail available at tiinspireapps.com and you will need your handy dandy TI Inspire CAS. Thanks for watching.